Hey everyone, it's Jen Sheffer here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Jamboard in conjunction with Seesaw as well as Google Classroom. So um, I attended the BPSCon session on Jamboard and I found it to be a really interesting tool. And I think uh, given the nature of this school year, it has a lot of potential in the classroom, um, specifically whether you're in person or you're doing hybrid or you're doing fully remote. I think the great thing about Jamboard is it gives our students the ability to collaborate um, digitally. And I'm hoping that um, this tutorial and some of the Jamboard templates that I've made for you um, will be useful and you will find some time um, to use them, um, to reach out to myself or any member of the BPS EdTech team for additional assistance and some ideas on how you could incorporate this into your classroom. I think you could do um, Jamboards as a whole class or you could use Jamboard as a way to differentiate and put your students into small groups. Um, but again, hopefully this will just give you some ideas and some of the templates that I've created, you'll be able to use them and just give it a try. So I want to start by, before I show you how to share a Jamboard into Seesaw, I want to open up a new tab. And the quickest way to get to Jamboard is just to type in jamboard.google.com. And that's going to pull up uh, your BPS account and any Jamboards that you have created or any Jamboards that have been shared with you, um, you will find them here, Jamboards that you make a copy of. So there's um, several from uh, social studies and science. And then you're going to see a lot of templates that I've created. Um, what I like is um, this is just simply one page of the Jamboard is what students might like, and then the next page is what they dislike. Um, this one here is just one question that I have is. Um, the next one here would be a collaborative book recommendation. So there's, I created 15 pages. I'm going to just open this one up really quick. Um, this was inspired by a fourth grade teacher's classroom that I went into, and I thought we could make this digital. Uh, students could put their name. They could put um, a sentence or two about uh, the book, their recommendation, a photo of the book. And if I just click right here where I can expand, you'll see that there are 15 um, different pages in this particular um, Jamboard, one for each student. You could make a copy of this and then add or delete pages as necessary. Um, simple design, just like a lot of Google products, clean and simple so that the focus can really be on the learning and the technology is invisible. So that's what um, makes this a great tool, um, in my opinion. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the back button at the top so I can go back into Jamboard to see the additional templates that are there. Um, I created these um, with different content areas and grade levels in mind. So hopefully, um, regardless of the grade or content area that you teach, you'll find that, yeah, I could actually use that, I think. Um, this one here is uh, active listening, what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like. Uh, so a lot of social emotional learning purposes. A lot of um, digital do nows, I'd like to say. So at the beginning of a Google Meet, for example, um, just like in the real physical classroom, students walk through the door, you have something for them, for them to do. In your Google Meets during the remote portion of the day, or if you're fully remote, you can put a link to the Jamboard in the chat. So the moment the students get in, they know they have something to do. So it might be active listening. What does it look, sound, and feel like during a Google Meet? Um, so that might be something that you would find useful and necessary for your classes as we continue here with um, remote learning and or hybrid learning. So that was active listening. This one, Rosebud and Thorn, I did some research on um, responsive classroom. I came across this activity. I thought on a Monday morning, this might be nice for kids to do. What was the highlight of the weekend? What are they looking forward to? What was difficult about the weekend? Um, so there's a possibility for you on a Monday morning. Um, the other one, is a closing meeting. So this could be at the end of your remote portion of the day. Um, there's three pages on this Jamboard and the students could choose to add to the page one thing that made them smile or happy that day. Uh, the next frame has one thing that they learned. And then the last frame is um, what is one thing that they did to help out the classroom or school community. So you could assign students to choose one of those frames to contribute to, or you could say they have to 
um, add to each and every single one of those frames. It's totally up to you. But just showing you a couple more that I did, somewhere specific to ELA. Um, this one here is the author's purpose. So you could read a story. What was the purpose of the author? Uh, was it to inform, persuade, or entertain? Um, this one here is a thumbs up, thumbs down. There are sticky notes that are generic with just um, name for either the students to put their name or if you wanted to make a copy of this and put your students' names, you could do that. So this allows students to give you um, an indication of where they're at with their learning. Do they really need help? They really don't get it. They kind of need a little bit of help or they totally understand everything. Um, so there's a... Um, a, a digital formative assessment that would allow you to great to gather some great data. Um, this is a reading review. Um, this would uh, give students the opportunity to assess their reading goals for the year. Um, they want to get better at remembering what they read, sounding better when they read out loud, or understanding what they read. So you could make a copy of this template and you could rename it reading review week one or reading assessment week one. Um, and then you could um, make additional templates to see if students change their goal as the year progresses in terms of um, how they want to um, improve their reading. So whether it's reading, um, understanding, remembering, or sounding better when they read out loud. Um, and I have um, this last one here, and I'll use this one as the example for how would we get a template into Seesaw. Uh, this is a agree or disagree. It's strongly agree or agree, and then strongly disagree or disagree. So what do you think? So again, relatively simple, clean design. I took some of these fonts from Google Slides and I just took screenshots and just to change the font up a bit. But again, what's nice about Jamboard is that the focus is on the learning and, and not the bells and whistles of the technology. So a nice collaborative space for the students to do um, either a whole class collaboration or smaller group collaboration. So if you wanted to give this a try, how would you do it? Um, if you are a Google Classroom user, you could copy and paste the link into Google Classroom. But if you're a Seesaw user and you're working with younger students, I wanted to show you this um, and encourage you to give it a try. Collaborate with me or um, another um, building technology specialist in the district and see how it works out. So there is a learning curve. And I think with all of us working together, we could definitely make this happen. So first I'm going to, if, if you like this template, you're gonna click on the three dots and I'll make a copy. And I'm just gonna keep, keep the name copy of agree, disagree. So that's going to load. And then the next thing I need to do is change the sharing permissions. And I'm going to change this to anyone with the link can view. And I'm going to give edit permissions so that my students can write on it. And prior to doing this, you'd want to maybe do it in the classroom when the students are with you. And you'd want to have a discussion on digital citizenship. It's a great teachable moment talking to students about your expectations and what the consequences will be if they do not follow your expectations in, ter in terms of their behavior um, online and digitally. So once they've um, had that discussion with you, and you can try it in the classroom, you could try it through Seesaw. So I'm going to click on that share button. I'm going to change it from private and I'm going to change it from Burlington Public Schools to, I'm going to click that drop down. I'm going to do anyone with the link. And I'm going to change this from viewer to editor. Then I'm going to click done. So now I'm going to go into Seesaw. And this is not an activity that students will be responding to. This is just a collaborative space where I'm going to find out how do you feel about this? Do you agree or disagree? So in Seesaw, I'm going to hit the plus add. I'm going to do post student work and not an activity because it's not a template that they're going to write on. It's just a way for them to gain access to the Jamboard. So I'm gonna click on drawing and it's gonna open up the blank canvas. I'm gonna open a new tab and I want to look for the Jamboard icon because I'm going to copy and paste the icon of the Jamboard onto that blank Seesaw canvas. And then I'm gonna link the Jamboard to that icon, to the picture of the Jamboard. So I'm gonna right click 
I'm going to click Copy Image. I'm going to go back into Seesaw, Control V. It's going to paste the image of the Jamboard icon, and I'm going to shrink it down a bit, and I'm going to add it here. Now I'm going to go to that Copy. My sharing permissions are all set, and I'm going to click on Copy Link. I'm going to go back to Seesaw. I'm going to click on the three dots on this image, and I'm going to click Link, and then I'm going to paste the Jamboard. Now, what I love about Seesaw is that I can, I'm going to drag this over here. I can t level this up to, um, you know, the next step to ensure that my students understand what I want them to do. And I can do that two different ways. I can click on the T and I can add written instructions to say, click on the Jamboard icon to go to, um, to go to today's Jamboard. And again, this would be after you've had an initial discussion about what it is, um, appropriate use of the tool, so on and so forth. So that's choice one. I can add that text, and then I can drag those corners to make the text however um, large or small I want it. But what I really love about Seesaw, especially with younger learners, is I'm going to just click on these three dots, and I'm going to delete that text. I can add video instructions, which I think in this environment, given the nature of this school year, the more we can add video um, to give explicit, clear directions to our kiddos, the better. So I'm going to click on that photo button and I'm going to click video. And now I have five minutes to record a detailed explanation of what I want them to do on this Jamboard. So the complexity of the tasks that you're asking them to do can um, you know, become more, more difficult. It can become more complex as the year progresses, as they get more comfortable with this tool. But for right now, you can just go ahead and click on the record button. It's going to count you down. Boys and girls, I would like you to click on the Jamboard icon to the right of this video, and you are going to be telling me whether you strongly agree or agree, whether you strongly disagree or disagree with and whatever it is that you did. Whatever topic you're discussing, um, a book that you read, a debate you're having in class, um, a, con a concept, um, a theory, Again, this I don't think this is just for um, elementary school. This really lends itself to middle and high school. So again, um, the advantage of this on Seesaw is that you can have a video explaining what you want the students to do. And then when you're done, you're going to click on the green check mark. It's going to be uploaded. Um, we're going to do sample student here. Um, or you could do all students. And again, if it was a Jamboard that you just wanted certain select groups of students to do group A, B, C, um, group red, blue, or green, or however you're um, dividing up your students within groups, you can click and choose which students will receive that Jamboard. So I'm going to click the green check mark. I could also add, um, put it into a folder if I wanted to, or I could just leave it uh, blank. Maybe I want to make this... Um, the folder FA for formative assessment. Whatever you want to do as a teacher, you have the option to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the check mark. I'm not going to mark it a uh, particular folder. And then it's going to be put right here. So it's simple and clean. The, the student would, so I'm going to just go ahead and um, close out these two Jamboards and then my Jamboard um, image search. And what the student will do when they're ready, they'll watch the video, then they can click on that Jamboard icon, link button. It's going to open up the post. I can go ahead and click and you see here it's opening up in a new tab. Now I'm doing this on my Chromebook. Students would be doing this on their iPad and when they click on that link, they would be brought to the Jamboard app on their iPad. Um, so for our young students, it's a seamless way to get them into Jamboard. And if you're a Google Classroom user, um, I can pull up classroom.google.com, quickest way to get 
for me anyway, that's the quickest way to get to any Google product. I just put the name of the product, .google.com. So I'm in classroom.google.com. I believe I have a BPS PD 2020 course, and I do, so I can open that up. So again, it just depends on the platform that you're using predominantly for your digital workflow. I know that four and five middle school and high school, you're using um, a lot with Google Classroom. Uh, for our Seesaw users, I want to show you um, how to get it into Seesaw. So I'm going to share with my class. I can just come right over here. I can grab that link, go into my BPS class, click on add the link, paste that link, type add. I can add some um, written instructions. Please click on the link to go to today's Jamboard. And then I can post or I can schedule that um, to send out at a later date, but I'll go, just go ahead and post it. And that pops up in the stream. If I click on that tab, I'm just gonna click and you see it pushes me right into the Jamboard app as well. So. Again, I'm doing this on my Chromebook, but I am. Um, it would work seamlessly on the apps on the iPad. So I hope that you will give Jamboard a try. Um, there's another tutorial on how to make a Jamboard, but um, you can take these existing templates. I've tried to make it as easy as possible for you. Take these existing templates, go back um, and rewind if you need to, to um, view again how I grab the link and then I put it into Seesaw um, for kids to click on. And hopefully you will give this a try. It's a great way to get our students collaborating in a digital space to get them really focused on some hopefully deeper learning and some deeper thinking um, and interaction with their peers. And uh, it's a wonderful way to build in some digital citizenship uh, education that is practical and useful and meaningful to kids. And I greatly appreciate you taking some time to watch this video. Um, you can subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you want to see um, videos that I post. Um, please email me if there's something that you'd like me to um, create. If, if, if there's a video you'd like me to create, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to work with you. And um, any member of the BPS EdTech team is here to support you as we move forward in this school year. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.